Hey everybody, this is Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com, and in today's episode, we're going to talk about six sacrifices you can make in singleness that will really pay off one day in marriage. So throughout the Bible, we are warned that we always reap what we sow. The choices we made in the past are affecting us right now, and the choices we are making right now will affect us one day in the future. The same is true when it comes to the choices we make in singleness. Most Christians will be married one day, and the choices we make in our singleness will positively or negatively affect that season of life. Another biblical principle is that short-term sacrifices usually lead to long-term rewards, while quick pleasures usually lead to long-term problems. So here are six sacrifices you can make in your season of Christian singleness that will help you reap blessings in your future Christian marriage. Number one, consistent devotional time. Every Christian knows they should read the Bible daily, pray daily, and go to church weekly. Most Christians also know how to do these things. The problem is not in our ability or our knowledge. The real problem usually lies with our commitment. Quite frankly, it's much easier to not read the Bible to not pray, and to not go to church. Doing these things consistently are not easy. It takes real discipline and work. Once you do them, it is usually very enjoyable, but just starting can be a challenge. And I think every honest Christian knows that this is a a real struggle. While it's easy to imagine that married life will be quieter and less busy and thus easier to personally see God, The truth, however, is that in most cases, it doesn't get any easier. It actually gets much harder. If you cannot find time to have a daily devotional time when you are living alone, it's very unlikely that you will find the time when you are living with your spouse. Marriage should help your walk with God and not hurt it. But if we do not learn to seek God in our singleness, we will most likely seek God even less in our marriage. If you learn to be disciplined and devoted to seeking God through Bible study, prayer, and going to church in your singleness, you will be blessed by these healthy habits in your marriage. Number two, being financially wise and self-controlled. Whenever a marriage poll is taken, money is consistently ranked as one of the top stressors to a marriage. When you are single, there's no one there to disagree with your financial decisions. However, when you're married, your bank account becomes one as well. Debt is never good. If you live outside of your means and misuse credit to your, in your singleness, the temptation to do so will be even greater in marriage. If you learn in your singleness, however, on how to budget, live within your means, and tithe, and enjoy what you have rather than being discontent with what you don't have, you will be very happy you did uh, learn these lessons once you get married. And as a side note, your spouse will be very happy you are financially wise too. Number three, resisting sexual temptation and sanctifying your sexuality. One of the biggest areas we hurt ourselves in during our season of singleness is in the area of sexuality. Within the Bible, there are only two options for sexual activity. If you are single, complete abstinence. If you are married, sexual activity only with your spouse. If you want a blessed sexual relationship with your spouse in marriage, you should seek to have a biblical sexual lifestyle in your singleness. You will be the same you in marriage. If you are living in sexual sin and singleness, you will find ways to live in sexual sin in marriage. It's really an odd trend, but here's what the flesh, the world, and the devil try to accomplish in our lives. They want you to have as much sex as possible in your singleness and as little as sex as possible in your marriage. Many men and women live sexually busy lifestyles in singleness and dating. But then when they get married, the sex often stops after some years. Why is that? Because the root issue is about obeying or disobeying God. If you are living in sin and following the flesh rather than the spirit, you will do the opposite of what God wants. So in singleness, that means you will be sexually active. In marriage, that means you will be sexually inactive. God wants the opposite. 
He wants sexual inactivity and singleness and lots of healthy sexual activity in marriage. So if you want what God wants for you in marriage in regards to sex, then you must want what God wants for you in your singleness in regards to sex. Don't think you can have it your way in singleness and God's way in marriage. If you want a blessed sexual union in marriage, seek a blessed sexual lifestyle in singleness. So God can redeem our past sins. If you've sinned in this area in your singleness, don't feel like you've already blown it completely because God's grace is always enough. But your present choices always impact your future self. Regardless of your past mistakes, start obeying God right now in your singleness so he can bless your future marriage. Number four, taking care of your body and making healthy choices. Oftentimes, Christians have a tendency to underemphasize the importance of the body because we feel we are supposed to be heavenly minded. While I believe we should continue to grow spiritually, this does not mean we have to pay less attention to our bodies. Our bodies are directly tied to our identity and God wants us to serve him with our bodies. The Bible says if we neglect our bodies and do not train them, there are spiritual conse consequences to pay. For example, in 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20, it says, Or do you not know that the body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. So why am I talking about this in regards to sowing and singleness so you can reap in marriage? It is very unlikely that you will be more in shape when you get married. It is statistically more likely to gain weight rather than lose weight when you are married and especially when you have kids. If you don't find the time and energy in singleness to work out and to eat healthy and to sleep the proper amount, it's not going to get better later in life. So, he so set healthy habits now that will be there to fall back on later in life when things get even more hectic. Number five, working on conflict resolution. If you don't learn how to deal with conflict in your singleness, you'll be farther back than you need to be in marriage. Conflict in marriage is unavoidable. Everyone has some form of conflict in marriage. The area where marriages are separated into healthy and unhealthy camps is not in does conflict happen, but rather in how is the conflict handled. In singleness, you, you will have conflict at work, with your family members, with friends, and in dating relationships, and in all kinds of other areas. If you run from conflict in your singleness, you are training yourself to run from conflict in your marriage. Conf conflict resolution is a skill just like any other skill, and it takes time and practice to develop. While it is sometimes easier just to let a friendship fade or end a dating relationship badly, the biblical approach is to be as respectful and peaceful as possible at all times. Even if you're going to break up with somebody, you will benefit your own heart and theirs if you try to end the relationship in the most respectful way you can. If you seek to mature and handle conflict well in singleness, you will be way ahead of the game once you get married. And finally, number six, serving those in need. There are so many more sacrifices we could talk about that you can make in singleness to benefit your, yourself and your spouse one day in marriage. But one of the most important is developing your service skills. Serving does not come naturally to us. It always sounds like a magical idea in our heads that we would love to do, but the reality of serving those in need is always much harder and much messier than we thought. One of the biblical benefits of singleness is that you have a greater opportunity to focus directly on ministry. While singles do not have a greater obligation to remember the poor and needy, like all people, all Christians have that responsibility just as equally as Christian singles. However, in 1 Corinthians 7 verse 32 through 35, the Bible does indicate that singles are often in a better position to meet the needs of others. If there always seems to be a reason not to serve the poor and needy in your singleness, those roadblocks will only increase later in life. Not only that, but perhaps the best marriage training is serving others. When you increase your ability to sacrifice for others while not expecting anything in return, 
you are developing the, the exact ingredients needed to have a healthy marriage. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want more detailed information about Christian singleness, you may enjoy my free ebook called The Ultimate Guide to Christian Singleness. I sell this book for uh, $12.99 in paperback on Amazon, but I give away a free digital version of this book on my website. So check out the links in the description below if you want a free copy. Well, I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com. Really hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and until next time, God bless.